if they let me sleep out, I would. <laughs> it's an unreal feeling, hey. Like, words can't describe how I feel right now. And to be captain is a great honour. And it's brilliant what the lads did out there. They emptied the tank, like, give everything they had. We were back against the wall. Like, we knew it didn't improve. Like, they were going to come back at us and probably lose the game. But fortunately, like, we knew we had a left our game. We did. And obviously, uh, probably the most vocal support of any any team in this competition. The 16th man, I call them. <laughs> they're like the dubs there. It's just everywhere they go, they're class. Like, they really like cheer you on in the matches and all that there. Like, seeing you're running forward, you feel the vibe coming off them. Well, we were disappointed with our first half showing because we had said to the boys we knew Oma's game plan was very much founded on not allowing you any midfield dominance or whatever, not allowing you win ball in there. We had said we would challenge them on the break ball. We felt we let ourselves down on that in the first half and didn't do that well enough. And that in itself put us on our, put us on the back foot a wee bit. It didn't give us the control of the football that we wanted. It didn't allow us to play the football that we feel we're capable of playing. Uh, we put that to them at half time. They were very honest about it. They accepted that themselves. Uh, we lost away a wee bit in terms of that five minutes before half time, but then I think when we got it sorted at half time, we started winning that breaking ball. We started the two Connors, Connor Cassidy, Connor Glass, started winning a tremendous ball in the air for us as well. And that gave us the platform to go and release our footballers and release the boys that bring the bit of pace, a bit of intensity to our game. And that allowed us, I think, dictate the second half of the game. Fantastic performance, second half now, we were down two at half time. Um, second half produced a big performance, started second half, scored five points, but above all, around the middle of the field, Connor Cassidy, Connor Glass, they put a big shift in. Now, thankfully, Danny got the goal. Um, almost a good team, a very good team. We give them a lot of respect for the day, but we knew today was going to be a big battle, but thank God now we've come through now. It's the biggest achievement for the, for the college and for Paul and Colm, who have now got the second recruit in a row now, third final in a row. So, it's a big achievement for, for dairy football in general, but above all, for the school. Well, we've been fortunate this past two or three years. Uh, it has fallen on a school day, number one. We've taken it as a school day, which is a big plus for us. And even more fortunate that Marty and Sean Marty had us in the two previous finals. And that, that in itself generates a sort of a momentum about the school. And people get this buzz of, ah, you're going to the, ah, I'm going to the McCroy. And everybody wants to be there. And I've said it many times, it's almost like the school's cheering out because everybody remembers being young, being at the McCrory final, the buzz on the buses, the buzz in the stand, the buzz afterwards. What what better thing than making people happy? And I suppose the old saying is that, you know, success breeds success? That is the thing, absolutely. And the more that boys see these Cubs winning and things like it, we have all the younger boys down the school that look at this and say, hey, I want a bit of that when I get that age as well. And they see what it means to the boys, particularly the year 14 boys, they see what it means to them, how much they're prepared to put into it the sacrifices they're prepared to make, and we ask plenty of them. But the boys always measure up because they know they know the buzz that McCrory is and they know the buzz that McCrory gives them. And it's a tremendous competition, absolutely tremendous competition for that. To be honest, this last you know four or five years, we've, we've had serious success down through the school, Corn Rogues, Daltons, Ranafas, and thankfully it's filtered through to the McCrory. You know, for years here, we maybe had seven, eight years here, we didn't win nothing in terms of McCrory. We actually ten years since we won McCrory in 2003. But thankfully now we've turned the corner we're now recognised, we're now at the top table and hopefully, hopefully, hopefully we're going to stay at the top table. But thankfully we're there and we're very, very happy. And I suppose now eyes on the bigger prize, the Hogan? Oh, listen, to be honest, we never really thought much of the Hogan. You know, we took each game as it comes. Now, I know, I know Paul and Colm um, will we'll get the team down now and we'll, we'll work hard and prepare for the semi-final because last year we're in the exact same boat and we're, we're in a bonus land now. Last year we went to Crook Park, we won the Hogan, it was a big achievement for the school and I, I dare say these boys here can emulate the boys of last year. There's a school in Dublin, College of Owen, who have won the Leinster school's title. Dublin football's on a high before we think about retaining the Hogan Cup or anything at all like it. We'll have to negotiate what I would say will be a very difficult hurdle for us against College of Owen. But We'll certainly start looking at that, we'll start preparing for that and we'll do our damnedest to get to another Hogan final, absolutely.